staying safe and good wishes to all your families in India. I think the situation is getting slightly better, not a whole lot better, but we, our prayers for everybody is uh, health and well being. So, um, going back to, I know many of you have heard this many times, so I'm going to keep it short, but I think the important piece is that last week we celebrated that we crossed our 100,000 milestone, which was awesome. Our goal for this um, fundraising effort, this uh, tranche of fundraising is 500,000. And I'm really, really excited to share that today, as of today, we are a little under 150,000. So great, uh, a huge applaud and a humble thank you to all of you who have contributed. Uh, last week, we had a few more uh, donors. We, uh, Radha Damodar Das and Atmamaya Mataji have contributed $10,000. Uh, we have an anonymous donor uh, who has contributed 1,116. And then we've also had Amruta Mataji, Am Amit Prabhu, and Manish Rati who've made contributions. So all in all, while we are at a very good place of 142,000, it's, um, it's important to also recognize that our goal was 500,000 because you, as you know, property in Austin, North Austin or South Austin, anywhere is very expensive today. So we want to continue being able to share out this information as much as possible. Uh, a few days ago in the WhatsApp group uh, and on Facebook, we've shared this again. So it has two pieces so that it empowers you to be able to share with people outside our community. It has the flyer that uh, and give and, you know gives you all the details about what we are raising funds for, and it also has benefits of building a temple. So if you are speaking with family or friends who are not uh, who believe in pious activities and who have a big heart but don't understand what does it mean to build a temple and how will this benefit us. We live in the material world, we have to understand. So everybody is, um, you know, at work, we have this phrase called WIFM. Everybody is asking, what's in it for me? And I think it's important to not only ask for donations from our family, friends, and people who we have remotely in our network also, but also give them an understanding of what is it, what is it in it for me? And that, well, you know, a few bullets that I shared, I didn't want to make it too long because then nobody reads it. Uh, so that, that has a few bullets, which talks about the benefits of doing, building a temple. So there is a tangible benefit for our lifetime. So please uh, continue sharing this out in your WhatsApp groups, in your Facebook pages, uh, share the, share the, um, Jesu Bhatra Mataji shared it also. Share it on your own page. Let people know why it's so important to build a temple. Um, so transitioning in, I found uh, a nice, um, you know, uh, excerpt on glories of building a temple for Sri Hari, which I wanted to share with all of you. It, it definitely, I think once we read it, and I will share it in the WhatsApp group also, once we read it, it really, really inspires somebody to do what it takes to build a temple for Lord Krishna. So here it says, if one contributes towards temple construction, devotional service becomes increasingly more tangible and feasible reality of one's life. So. Somehow or other, Krishna will pull you into devotional service just by making a contribution towards the temple construction. Okay. Um, Srila Prabhupada's intent, you know, what, uh, what it said, it's his transcendental scheme. I know in the US, we don't use the term scheme as much. It, you can call it a program or an offer or a provision. But in India, it's very uh, any program is also called a scheme. Uh, so his his transcendental scheme in having us, his disciples built is to have his disciples build temples around the world. For me personally, I've lived in so many 
cities and countries. Even in the US, this is my fourth or fifth location. And in each place, the one thing that we check if we are going to move is, is there a temple? Now, if there isn't a temple, I can tell you, it would put a barrier to us even you know, considering to move. And how did all these temples come up? They came up because Srila Prabhupada's disciples have built temples around the world. Lord Chaitanya had said, there will be a chanting of Hare Krishna movement in every town and village. And that is happening by the power and the mercy of <clears throat> Sri Krishna and his disciples. So uh, Srila Prabhupada said it's especially important that his di disciples build temples. It is especially an opportunity for fallen souls everywhere to acquire spiritual benefit by participation and by charity. So when you, you know, when I was at the, initially at the LA temple every Sunday, some people would bring, bring bags of rice, some people would bring, bring flour, some people would leave milk. You know, when we go to visit somebody, we always take something as an acknowledgement and gratitude to them. And we do the same when we come to the temple. And by doing this, you know, we unknowingly are acquiring pious credit. So <laughs> it is called Agyata Sukriti, unknowingly acquiring pious credit. In Srimad Bhagavatam, we find verses that say, by installing the deity of the Lord, one becomes the king of the entire earth. By building a temple for the Lord, one becomes ruler of the three worlds. By worshipping and serving the deity, <coughs> one goes to the planet of Lord Brahma. And by performing all three activities, one achieves a transcendental form like my own. One who offers the deity gifts of land, markets, cities, and villages so that the regular worship and special festivals of the deity may go on continuously, will achieve opulence equal to my own. So I always uh, share with uh, non-devotees as to what is it that you want from life, okay? Some people want fame, some want, you know, their appearance and health and beauty, some want power, some want money. And I, I tell them, wonderful. And you, what would you do if you could get all of these, you know, power, fame, wealth, knowledge, um, beauty, um, uh, all of this? What if, you know, what if there was a way for you to get all of this? And they're like, there's no way you can get all of this. And I said, yes, there is. Because when we go to Krishna, who is the reservoir of all of these and the original form of all of this, when we go to his loka, we get all of this. We get health. There's no duality in the spiritual world. And of course, it's a hard concept for people to understand and comprehend. But the more you engage yourselves in, this, in these activities, the more you realize that all these opulences, the reservoir of all these opulences is Sri Krishna. And the only way for us to ultimately be free from the miseries of the material world and not fall down to the hellish planets is to transcend. And by transcending, we will reach a point where we will be in no dualities, no uh, sukh and dukh, day and night. It will all be very divine and opulous. So this is our opportunity. We have to contribute to Srila Prabhupada's movement. We have to do our share so that we are benefiting from what Srila Prabhupada's direct disciples did. We're probably in that second generation now. But if we don't continue this effort, if we don't continue investing in our youth in the next generation, then they are not going to have the same opportunity that we had. And as parents, as citizens, it is our duty to contribute to the society, to spiritual life, so that in generations to come, they can only get increased benefit versus decreased benefit. 
we all know Kalyugis will only keep increasing and the with the grip of Kalyug, I mean, a lot of people say today also that maybe this is pralay, it is coming and I'm, I'm like, no, it is not pralay. Kalyug is supposed to last for 432,000 years and we are only through 5,000 years and people are feeling the misery even in these 5,000 years. This is just the beginning. So imagine, do we or do we want our children to be reborn? and go through several lives in Kalyug, it's only going to get harder. It's only going to get worse. And as Srila Prabhupada said, the, uh, to sustain the same level of life and happiness, we will have to keep putting in more and more. To, uh, and in his, in his words, as if I remember correctly, it was said, for the same loaf of bread, you're going to have to work harder and harder. Uh, so again, it comes back to if we do not have a temple and we do not, uh, we are not able to give our children the right space and environment to grow into becoming devotees, it is a missed opportunity for this human birth for us. So please be the warrior, go out, reach out to people, reach out to anybody and everybody. They don't have to be Indian. They don't have to be American. Just whoever you can reach out to, reach out and help us in this, help ourselves in this mission, in this goal of building the new temple of Hare Krishna, temple of Austin. I can tell you when we go back uh, to our adventure lane location, we know we are going to be out of space, but we want to build space. We want to create space for so many more devotee families to comfortably come there, bring their fam bring their children, bring their parents, attend Sunday school, attend all the festivals, and you know, increase the spiritual engagement in this human life. We do not have time to wait. So please. You know, our, as, as you saw in my WhatsApp message, our contributions this week were, we are very thankful for that. So do not, you know, think that I'm not being appreciative, but we are still very far from our goal. So it is my humble request, please reach out to whoever you can so that we can continue building uh, the funds for our new temple. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Sarumanjar Mataji, for this, such a nice uh, message. So with that, uh, let us start with, um, we are going to um, move on to the next uh, segment of our agenda, which is Bhagavad Gita class. Uh, we have a very special speaker, uh, Manjari Mataji. So just a quick introduction. Um, our great Swarnamanjari Mataji, uh, she is very well known in our congregation uh, for her wonderful um, uh, Vaishnava qualities, you know, melodious kirtans. She is very famous for melodious kirtans. And of course, for her sincere devotion uh, to Srila Prabhupada and um, serving uh, Guru and Krishna. So she and Rahul Prabhu, her husband, are the pillar of support for our temple. As you see here, uh, she is spearheading our uh, temple fundraising initiative as well. So she does many other services um, uh, in, uh, in the background. So with that, let us welcome Swarnamanjari Mataji by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra one time loudly. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Over to you, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. So we'll start with Jai Radha Madhava before we get into the lecture. Jai Radha Madhava, Jai Okunja Bihari, Jai Yeah, 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 
Krishna, I'm going to sh start sharing screen. Prabhuji, can you give me permission to share screen? Sure, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhuji. <clears throat> So we are going to start with our pranam mantras and give me a second, it's always, even though we do it every day, it still <laughs> trumps us sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll do our pranam mantras and then we'll go into the class. Om Ajnati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakada Mahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupa Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Vishashri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे लेट अस इनवोक ऑल ऑस्पिशियसनेस बाय चैंटिंग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय so for many weeks i know we've been covering one or the other verse on chapter 15 so in the same light of continuation uh, so this sir prabhu uh, requested uh, ch- chapter 15 verse 8 and uh, like many others chapter 15 is also a very um, you know is is one of my favorite chapters and i used to hear this from people before and i never understood why and it was not until last year during adhik mass when we started chanting chapter 15 and my parents do it every day morning evening and i used to never understand it. the the just for me reading that chapter was very difficult because the verses were very difficult but for those of you who are in that situation i want to tell you initially it is but afterwards it becomes so easy so melodious and so meaningful that you'll want to do it over and over again so today's verse is chapter 15 is yoga of the supreme person it's also called purushottam yoga and today's verse is verse number 8 so i'm going to chant the verse and after that if you know we have two volunteers who will repeat it that will be wonderful shariram yada vapnoti yachha prutkramati shwara grihitvaitani samyati vayur gandhani vashaya do we have to, uh, two volunteers who would like to uh, recite the verse i can do I can recite Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Sariram yad avapnoti yachapi utra mati swaraha krihit vaitani samyati vayur gandhan ivasyata ivasyat ivasayat. Thank you, Prabhu. Sariram yad avapnoti yachapi utra mati swaraha गृहित वाईतानी संभियाती वायुर गंधम ईशा सहयत थैंक यू माता जी सो शरीरम द बॉडी शरीर इन हिंदी इज आल्सो बॉडी यत एज अवापनोति गेट्स यत एज अपि आल्सो उत्क्रामति गिव्स अप दैट मींस व्हेन वी आर गिविंग अप दिस बॉडी ईश्वर द लॉर्ड ऑफ द बॉडी grihitva taking etani all these samyati goes away vayu the air gandhan the smell eva like asayat from their source shariram yad avapnoti yachha putkramati shwara grihitva etani samyati vayu gandhani vashaya translation the living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas thus he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another so one thing we know we trans we move from one body to another so just like how the air carries if there is any smell in the room the air carries it sometimes it you know a, f- a few seconds ago i was trying to clear my throat and that's because we were, there was cooking in the kitchen but that smell trans you know transferred from the kitchen to where i'm sitting because the air carried it likewise our body our soul goes from one body to another that is a given uh so but we have the opportunity to take our soul from a material body to a spiritual body so we will still have a, a body but what kind of body we get is the question 
So the living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aroma. Thus, he takes one body and again quits it to take another. You know, our children often ask us, and even as a child or sometimes even as an adult, we've asked this question, wow, this person is so lucky. What have they done, you know, to be so lucky? Or this person has everything that we say they're gifted. You know, in schools also you have these gifted programs. They're gifted. And sometimes, you know, I hear, oh, she has beauty. They have brains, beauty, knowledge, um, wealth, everything. What have they done to get it? This is, this is what it's going to tell us. Yes, there are actions that we carry from one lifetime to another. And that action forms that blueprint for what our next life is going to be. There is a um, very small book and I don't know, it's not available here, uh, but in India, my grandmother used to read it. It is called Garb Gita. And it pretty much talks about, you know, different types of actions give you different types of reactions and bodies. And I know in Buddhism also, there are several of those things, but the essence here is, you know, what is it that, take, that we carry from one body to another? I think that is the whole purpose. And what should we be thinking of to carry from one body to another? So we're going to go into the purport, and before we get into the purport, this was a very uh, powerful uh, screenshot that I took. It says, at the time of death, the consciousness he has created will carry him onto the next type of body. Now, my mother says that even if you happen to accidentally kill an ant, say Hare Krishna immediately because you're hoping that that consciousness you're transferring to that ant and they have a better next life. So the consciousness he has created will carry him to the next type of body. We all must have had some very good consciousness before coming to this human birth because we are associated today with devotees, with the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If he has made his consciousness like that of a cat or a dog, he's sure to change to a cat or a dog's body. And here when they say cat or a dog, my interpretation is animalistic life. And what is animalistic life? In essence, to a large extent, eating, sleeping, mating, defending is an animalistic life. So without that spiritual and consciousness, God consciousness, we are leading an animalistic life. So my interpretation of this is that, you know, if he has made his consciousness like that of a cat or a dog, he's sure to get a cat or a dog's body. Not that we think like a cat or a dog, but we are behaving like animals. And if he has fixed his consciousness on godly qualities, he will change into the form of a demigod. And if he is in Krishna consciousness, he will be transferred to Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. So I started by saying, you know, we all want all these different opulences and all the different uh, blessings, okay, to lead our lives. But the biggest blessing is just transcending. It sounds a lot easier than what it is. Obviously something that is so valuable, uh, there is going to be, you know, a criteria to get there, we know if it is in the material world, it's also going to be in the spiritual world. Um, but we are there, we have started our journey. So let's not go take steps back. Let's be the latter part of this text, which says, if he is in Krishna consciousness, he will be transferred to Krishna Loka in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. I mean, how blissful, you know, I know our Sunday lectures and thankfully here we have Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they are all for us to recharge our energy and reconnect. It's very easy. Maya is so powerful that it is very easy. Even if we skip a week by going on vacation and others, which I know we all do and which is you know also important, but the important part is 
no matter what we do, we cannot dilute our connection to Krishna consciousness because the moment we do that, Maya is sitting there so strong with open arms, throwing us baits every second of our life and so easy to fall into it. I mean, personally for me, it's hard. It's hard motivating people around you. It's hard motivating yourself on a daily basis. But the one thing that we can do to keep ourselves motivated is read, chant, listen, make offerings to Krishna. Do all those things which may look mundane at a material level, but it keeps awakening our consciousness that we're doing this for Krishna, either for Krishna or for us to get closer to Krishna. So this verse is reminding us that when we leave this body, it is whatever consciousness we have at that time, which will just like the air carries aroma, our consciousness will be carried from one body to another. And the next body we get is going to be dependent on our consciousness because that is like the smell in the air, which is going to move from one room to another or one body to another. We'll get into Srila Prabhupada's purport, and this was also from Srila Prabhupada's purport, but that the screen before that I was sharing was so powerful that I wanted to get that front and center. So Srila Prabhupada says, here the living entity is described as Ishwara, the controller of the body, because it says, shari, um, yet, um, it, sorry, Yachapi Utkramat Ishwara, okay? Ishwara, that means the controller of the body. If he or she likes, he can change his body to a higher grade. And if he likes, he can move to a lower class. I think a couple of weeks ago, I shared with the congregation that my mother was telling me as she was reading Srimad Bhagavatam that there are 21 levels of hell. That means hell is really, really massive planet, which means it's... You know, like they say, you go, you go to, um, when you're getting admissions, the Harvard is the hardest to get. And there are some which have a 90% acceptance rate. Likewise, I think hell has a very big acceptance rate. So it's very easy to slip and fall into hell and different degrees of hell. But anybody who's targeting for a more select uh, and um, place, whether it is Harvard or the Harvard of our lives is going to be uh, Golok Vaikuntha, uh, Krishna Loka, Golok Vrindavan. So that is the Harvard for us. And we have to work really hard to get there. So it is up to us. The reason we, the living entity is described as Ishvara is because we are, we have some, we control our actions. We have minute independence. Srila Prabhupada says minute. The word is minute. We all want to be independent. We all want to say, I want to be in a position where I only give, I don't take. You know, I've heard this so much from everybody that I know. Uh, but who are we to give? We think we are giving. Who are we to give? We are giving because God has given it to us. So we have minute independence to make the right judgment. For example, contributing to the temple, that is our minute independence to decide where we put the Lakshmi. But let me also tell you, Lakshmi has her own ways. She will go where she has to, one way or the other. So better that we exercise the right judgment and, you know, part with Lakshmi in the right way before she decides to part in the wrong way. So we have that minute independence and the change that we undergo, whether at a soul level, depends on us. Srila Prabhupada is saying, so the two important things here is we are in a very small capacity, the controller of our body. We have minute independence and that minute independence, you know, in, will determine how we change, which body we change to. So that depends on us. It is a false claim that after annihilation of this body, everything is finished. The individual soul is transmigrating from one body to another and his present body and present activities are the background of his next body. 
one gets a different body according to karma and he has to quit this body in due course. They say nothing is more certain than death and taxes and it's death of the body, not the soul. So we have to quit this body and take another form and that will be according to our karma. It is stated that the subtle body which carries the conception of the next body develops another body in the next life. This process of transmigrating from one body to another and struggling while in the, while in the body is called karshati or struggle for existence. Moving on. So the question we are, I always ask myself is why do we have this independence? You know, I've asked this so many times to myself, even though I know the answer, some days I wish that I didn't have the independence and that would make it so much easier for me to go back to God. But here Srila Prabhupada answers it very nicely. If the Supreme Lord were to interfere with the minute independence of the living entity, there would be no question of the living entities engaging in the loving service of the Lord, since love implies a spontaneous free choice by the lover. So you can't, and most of us who have children will understand this because we can't, we would never want to impose on our children to love us or just show love to us, but they really don't love us. We want it to come from within. I'm going to give an example. So a few weeks ago was Mother's Day. So, you know, different kids are different. And one of my kids who was like, oh yeah, it's Mother's Day. And she came and gave me a hug and said, happy Mother's Day. The other one, you know, got me gifts. But I know it's not about getting, and both of them love me the same way, but their expression is different. And just last week, one of them said, I'm not taking names because I don't want them to be embarrassed. Uh, just last week, one of them said that, you know, I don't thank you enough, but you do so much for us that I really want to tell you, I really appreciate it. Let me tell you, whether they said this on Mother's Day or whether they said it yesterday, it means the same thing. Mother's Day was just a day on the calendar, like Rahul says, it's a, uh, you know, um, retailer's retailers day so that people buy things but the real love the real love comes from within and you cannot make somebody love you because once you force them to love you it is not love and i think that is why going back to even though i asked this question many times as to why do we have this independence if we didn't have it we would naturally be on you know we would be on sitting on that train that took us to krishna loka but krishna says no if you love me it has to be sincere love, it has to come from within, it has to be spontaneous. Srila Prabhupada continues, just as a child having received a toy car from his father, pedals on the sidewalk, imitating the father who drives an actual car, the living entity pedals around the material universe in the innumerable material bodies selected for him by the Supreme Lord from an assortment of 8,400,000 species. Since the time, I think I was 21, I used to hear my grandmother say, in India, you don't use millions, you use lakhs. So she would say, you know, after 84 lakh like, uh, births, we got this human birth. And being very ignorant at that age and just, you know, full of youth and feeling invincible in life, I would say, how is that even possible that there are 84 million species? I only see people around me. So to me, human life did not look very rare at that time. But as, you know, as I've probably uh, moved in my journey from what I was 30 years ago, I understand now that no, this human life is so rare it is so precious and it comes with one primary goal. And that primary goal and that privilege that we have as humans, there is, that privilege doesn't exist in other species. So let us, you know, 
be mindful of this human life. For many of us, we've already lived half our lives or maybe even more, we don't know. So uh, it's really, really important that we engage spontaneously in the loving service of the Lord. Last bullet here says, thus the living entity infatuated with false ego of the material body. I just shared a few minutes ago that 30 years ago, you know, I was full of myself, thought I'm invincible. And in a lot, you know, not to say that that false ego is gone, it exists in some way, shape or form. And it surfaces itself in some way, shape or form. So that false ego of the material body, we are infatuated by it, creates a fearful situation in which he undergoes repeated birth and death as described in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a statement, Bhayam Dvitiya Bhini Veshata Syat. We, as long as we keep engaging with this body and letting our false ego drive us, drive our actions, we are going to be in this cycle of repeated birth and death. And there is no guarantee that this repeated, in this repeated birth and death, we may not fall from human life. And if we do fall from human life, we have to go through that full circle of 8,400,000 species to get to this point. So that is why our minute independence, even though it is minute, it is extremely critical as to how we manage our minute independence because that is going to determine what, what's next, okay? So uh, got this from another um, place on ISKCON Desire Tree, and I thought this was really important for us to understand. So it is the mind which enjoys pleasure and suffers the pain, okay? 50 years later, somebody was saying, 50 years later, I won't be this body, nor would my friends or so-called relatives who are expansions of this body. So. You know, it's very possible many of us none of, will not be here in 50 years. Even if some of us make it beyond 50 years, okay, it would be like an invalid body which won't support normal life. And I remember many, many classes ago, one of our devotees talked a little bit about this as to, you know, as mental faculties, mental and physical faculties keep deteriorating, we may not even be in my aunt. She passed away from Alzheimer's, okay? She had no consciousness of what is going on. So anybody can be hit at any time with, you know, with diseases that can make our body even invalid in, in terms of we cannot do much with our body, mentally, physically, either way. So that's an important piece to understand, even though we may think that hey, I'm going to retire in 10 years and then I will start, but I don't know what life in 10 years is going to be. Last year, we, I heard so many people say, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. I don't think they would repeat that again because 2021 has been harder than 2020. So let's live in that present moment and use our minute independence to do what is right in the present moment. The third bullet here says, if we don't live in this city of nine gates, that is this body, this body has nine gates. Beyond, if we don't live in this city of nine gates beyond 50 years, why should I endeavor so much and care this body taking all my lifetime? We spend so much energy. I, you know, I, I think it's good. And this is just personal. So if I'm offending somebody, please uh, forgive me. I think it's good to take care of your health. It's good to take care of your body. But I remember reading once when Prabhupada had said, endeavor is good. Over endeavor is not. So don't get so consumed, whether it is job or health or, you know, um, money or anything, don't get so consumed with anything that it becomes the prime goal of your life. I have seen, I've seen people of all kinds in, you know, 50 years now and uh, balance, balance is most important. The one thing that you can get out of 
that will not hurt you, excess of which is not going to hurt you, is chanting, reading, anything spiritual, excess of that will not hurt you. That is guaranteed. So the last bullet speaks to that. This world is a perfect jail. And unless we develop intense greed to attain Krishna, he could never be achieved. Intense greed is the price to develop bhakti and attain Krishna. So I'll go to the next page where it says, you know, I, I, I edited the words here a little bit because it says to buy Krishna. And I was like, no, no, how can you buy Krishna? But then when I read the next verse and in the next slide, it'll probably say that, I think we have to take it not in the material sense, but in the spiritual sense. The point here is that we are very trapped in the day-to-day, -day, which is normal because we have family lives, we have to do it, but we really have to be deliberate and intentional to carve out that dedicated time for Krishna. I know in a in a you know awake day of 12 hours, nobody is spending 12 hours on Krishna consciousness at, in, in a family life. But while you're cooking, if you can chant or listen to music, dedicate some time in the evening and morning to read, chant, listen to lectures. Even if we took out three hours out of 12 for Krishna, you know, that's a great place for us to develop that spontaneous love. Krishna will give it to us. If we don't also have it, Krishna will give it to us. We were sharing with somebody a few weeks ago that when we first got Laddu Gopal, my mother's guru gave us Laddu Gopal on our uh, uh, wedding, okay? And for three years, Laddu Gopal sat on a shelf. And then even when, after three years, we realized that we need to serve Laddu Gopal, we didn't know. We used to eat bread butter. And we used to, in the morning before um, having breakfast, we used to offer bread butter to Laddu Gopal. I mean, now when I think about it, it feels gross and sinful to me. But we did it. And because we did it with the right intent, we used to, when we had to do Abhishek, we didn't even know you know, how to do Abhishek. Rahul and I were just on our own and we were figuring out things on our own. We went and got the best soap. Okay, at that time, the best soap was some uh, liquid dove soap and we would bathe Ladu Gopal with that dove soap. And one day when I shared this with one of my Shiksha gurus, she was aghast. She's like, really, you've been doing this? I'm like, you told me whatever you eat, you offer to Krishna. And because I was going to eat bread butter, I offered bread butter to Krishna. And she said, okay, now you've taken this too far and you need to get into a, some form of a, what they would say framework. So she taught me, she came to our house. She taught us how to do seva, how to do Abhishek and how to offer food to Krishna. The point here is that Krishna is so merciful that if you do it with the right intent, if you do it out of spontaneous love, he will reveal himself to you. And he will, he's so, he's so kind. He doesn't need anything from us. I know we keep, I keep making this spiel on, we need to raise funds. We need to build a temple. Krishna doesn't need that for us. We are doing that for ourselves so that we can stay engaged with Krishna. We are not doing it for Krishna. When Lakshmi Devi is his consort, why would he need anything from us? But we talk about greed in a very negative way. They always say anger, lust, greed. These are the three gates to hell. Yes, they are. But if we utilize these for Krishna, okay, we will see the result is different. And the next piece that I'm going to share is about that. So Srila Rupa Goswami wrote, pure devotional service in Krishna consciousness cannot be had even by pious activity in hundreds and thousands of lives. So what are pious activities? Pious ex activities are doing charity, helping somebody in need. All the, all the activities that come in the mode of goodness are pious activities. 
But pious activities do not get us to pure devotional service and do not get us in Krishna consciousness. So how do we get to Krishna consciousness? It can be attained by paying one price and that is intense greed to obtain it. So if you want to keep greed, keep greed for getting Krishna. If it is available somewhere, one must purchase it without delay. So that, that purchase it piece did not resonate very well with me till I read this piece. And I shared earlier, I changed the words a little bit in the slide before because I couldn't come to terms with how can you purchase Krishna? You can purchase that, you can develop that intense greed. Okay. And if we, how do we purchase it? By associating with devotees who have that intense greed for Krishna. It's okay to be competitive, but competitive where? where you're going to move towards Krishna. It's okay to be greedy, where you're going to move towards Krishna. Prema Bhakti Chandrika. So this is from there. It says, following in the mood of Srila Rupa Goswami, the Vaishnav saint Srila Narottam Das Thakur has explained how any tendency that is an obstruction to our spiritual advancement can be transformed by relating it to Krishna. He specifically describes how the six enemies of lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, and pride can be conquered. I'm sure everybody here has at least one or more of these. So how do we conquer them? I will engage lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, and pride in their proper places. In this way, I will defeat the enemies. And with the ecstasy in my heart, I will worship Govinda without difficulty. I will engage my lust in eagerness to serve Krishna. And I will engage my anger against those who are envious of devotees. So when I, when I first read that you can engage anger, anger, lust and greed, I was like, lust and greed, I understand, but how anger? And this says it, I will engage my lust in eagerness to serve Krishna and I will engage my anger against those who are envious of devotees. So if you have to get angry, get angry at that. I will be greedy. If you have to be greedy, I will be greedy to hear the topics of Hari in association of devotees. I will be illusioned if I fail to achieve my worshipable Lord. And I will feel proud to chant the glories of Krishna. In this way, I will engage them in their respective duties. So uh, this is so, this was so powerful and so beautiful. And I had never read this before till the time I was preparing for this lecture that how we can engage all our uh, weaknesses, lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, pride, all of them, and how we can channelize them in a way that we still have them, but because we are utilizing them in service of Krishna, we nullify the impact effect of all of those. So, very beautifully said. And one, one other thought that comes to my mind that's not on the slide is we always talk about detachment. You know, we should not be very attached to family life, to children, to our dogs, to our any money, all of that. So how do you gain the detachment? Because it is our human nature that gets us attached to various things. So detachment is really attachment to Krishna. So detachment from worldly um, pleasures will only come when we develop attachment to Krishna. Likewise, we can channelize these six enemies to help us get attached to Krishna. And that will automatically get us detached from other things. So this is a continuation from uh, the script that I was reading. It's uh, Srila Prabhupada says, Look at this, look at that, all our pitfalls. You know, when we say, look what she did. This is, this is exactly what I was saying. 
she doesn't have respect she doesn't do this we keep talking like this and I, I, i'm sorry if others don't do it but i have you know we are very by human nature we're very critical it's very easy for us to find faults with other things but we have to look at ourselves these are all pitfalls and they are trapping me into this world at any moment no use to look anywhere but within within that means look in in your own heart to hear the call from my lord initially i'm going to pause here but initially when i used to get opportunities for service it was very easy for me to say no to them okay early years today when i get an opportunity for service i look at it differently i'm like oh, you know this is krishna telling me go do it so listen to the voice the call of the lord and do it don't think if you're getting an opportunity for service if we are getting an opportunity to um grow in your spiritual life in whatever way shape or form do it i'll tell you why the more you do it the more you hear the call of god so do it my own desire to engage here what kills my soul life after life so our desire to enjoy is what is the biggest barrier and that you know puts us in this repeated cycle of birth and death there are a lot of things that happen in our life which sometimes create a moral conflict and because of being in dualities it drives us crazy to go nuts and get lost so this is i'm i'm reading all this from shila prabhupad's lecture so um the i'll i'll get this there's more explanation in the next um slide but the important thing here is dualities of life so we we are always in a conflict you know uh sometimes we want to do things and we are still not able to because there's some mental emotional conflict and that's because we live in a world of dualities but when we get uh, get to the spiritual world that has no dualities so that's going to be a great place for us to be in in mahabharat and this is something which everybody must have heard or learned and for those who haven't this will be very interesting to understand bhishma dev had a moral conflict when draupadi was pleading for help and as she was disrobed by the kauravas and so he had a hard time making a decision and couldn't help her similarly life throws us into many situations which makes us feel totally drowned in a life of sorrows so for our, for the kids who may or may not know when draupadi was being disrobed she begged and she asked for bhishma dev to protect her bhishma dev was a very you know uh, he was a very good devotee he always did what was right but his conflict was he had taken an oath to serve the king and if he had to serve the king he was not able to help draupadi and these are the situations when we are in conflict and that we are not able to you know make do what even though our heart wants to do it we're not able to do it so how do we get out of this dualities in bhagavad gita uh, chapter 2 verse 45 krishna says o arjuna be transcendental to all of them be free from all dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety and be established in the self so what does this mean as long as the material body exists there are actions and reactions in the material modes one has to learn tolerance in the face of dualities such as happiness and distress cold and warmth and by tolerating such dualities one becomes free from anxieties regarding gain and loss the transcendental position is achieved for full krishna consciousness when one is fully dependent on the good will of krishna so granted as long as we are in this material life there is going to be actions and reactions in fact uh my grandmother used to say that do not do too many pious activities also because if you do if you're too much in the mode of goodness then also there will be reaction right 
the reaction of good is good but you will have to come back in human birth to take the you know to um get the reward of those good actions so she would say don't do too many pious activities if you have to do anything of too much and in her uh you know in her time when krishna consciousness was a different version uh because shila prabhupad was not here and they were not you know as uh, privy to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's movement but in her form she would say serve thakur ji talk to thakur ji and thakur ji in her uh, life was um, laddu gopal for all you know so she would say no 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 don't go too much in that direction also because then you'll have to come back to get the benefits of that good karma so keep your karma balanced and try to channelize as much activity because the only activity that does not result in reaction is activities in krishna consciousness so that is extremely important and how do we do it lord chaitanya mahaprabhu has to said trinad pi sunichana taro reva sahishnuna amalina manadena kirtaniya sadahari so be even tone happiness distress be even tone so you tolerate it and don't have anxiety you will have gain you will have loss it's okay because ultimately if we are dependent on the will of krishna as my dad said it is not my will it is thy will he'll always say so we have to be dependent on the will of krishna and if we have become dependent on krishna then nothing is worrying us a few weeks ago my parents had covid in india and they went through you know at their age getting covid is not easy and you know we are three sisters all three of us had different reactions but one thing we all anchored to is you know even though our emotional response to everything was different one thing we all anchored to is if it is krishna's will they will come through it and if krishna has decided that this is time we will have to accept it fortunately you know for us that they came through it and they are fine but it was krishna's will because i've seen people with no comorbidity you know good health much younger get impacted so why is that happening because we ultimately we have to depend on krishna's will moving on there's no use to waste time in talking about other people's mistakes like i said we are very good at being critical okay so let's stop doing that or how we were ill treated or how we were not understood despite our constant efforts to make them understand we do this a lot with our kids we do this most with our loved ones so there is no use to talk about it we really have to have faith in krishna say things to them and hope that they understand in the middle of the ocean what can you do if there is a storm only tolerate and try to see how soon you can get out of the ocean this material life is such a deep ocean where we are all where all of us are trapped we are running out of time to make a chance to get back home out of this ocean which has got ferocious animals that can eat us alive i think the way when when you read this it paints a picture in front of your eyes and that is why i say read at least one verse a day it transforms how you start looking at life and shila prabhupad had the gift of really painting a picture with his words so what this uh, verse 15.8 reminded me of and i wanted to share this before we come to the conclusion of this verse and i know it's getting to time antakale cha mameva smaran muktva kale varam प्रयाति याति नास्त्यत्र संशय एंड हुएवर एट द एंड ऑफ हिज लाइफ क्विट्स हिज बॉडी रिमेम्बरिंग मी अलोन एट वंस अटेन्स माय नेचर ऑफ दिस देर इज नो डाउट एनी वन हू क्विट्स हिज बॉडी इन कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस इज एट वंस ट्रांसफर्ड टू द ट्रांसेंडेंटल नेचर ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड the supreme lord is the purest of the pure therefore anyone who is constantly it's important constantly krishna conscious 
is also the purest of the pure. The word smaran, remembering, is very important. Remembrance of Krishna. This is very important because when I was young, I thought I will do this. And I now know it's not possible. Remembrance of Krishna is not possible for the impure soul who has not practiced Krishna consciousness in devotional service. Therefore, one should practice Krishna consciousness from the very beginning of life. And I know that the very beginning of life, a Krishna consciousness is only, uh, you know, available to very few people. But whenever you start, please focus that we will not remember Krishna if we have not practiced it all our life. We, when we go for an exam, we practice, practice, memorize, do everything. This is the same. This is life's exam. If one wants to achieve success at the end of his life, I think that if I ask anybody, do you want success or failure? The answer is going to be success no matter what. But this is success of life. Okay, this is the biggest success we can get. The process of remembering Krishna is essential. Therefore, one should constantly and incessantly chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Wrapping it up. What is our learning from... Uh, 15.8. Krishna is giving us clarity through fragrance. He's using fragrance as a way to give us clarity. Wind or air carries fragrance from one body and leaves the body to take another body. So just like the wind or air carries fragrance, we carry our karmic actions from one body to another. Similarly, our soul takes all the fragrance of our godliness or our inner growth and takes it to the new body. Krishna is talking about the great responsibility because we, he said, you're Ishvara, the controller of this body, the great responsibility towards ourselves. And what we can carry when we are leaving this body is only our soul. So very important, that minute independence, if we do not use it properly, it is going to change what next life looks for us. And let's remember, there are hellish planets, there is 432,000 years of Kaliyug. We're not going to be out of this trap. We're going to keep falling in this trap. The individual soul is transmigrating from one body to another and his present body and present activities are the background of his next body. Just like what you study in school takes you to where you go to college. Like that, what we do in this life determines what body we get next life. One gets a different body according to one's actions in life. While leaving the one body and taking the new body are conditioning. So the conditioning of our soul and discipline. Discipline is our action. The activities play a very, very important role. So I know I've spoken for almost 45 minutes. I'm going to pause here. Uh, stop screen sharing and open it up to... Satisar Prabhu and anybody who has questions, which I will attempt to answer, cannot guarantee because I'm also learning like all of you. Sure, Mother. The devotees, please feel free to ask questions. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Um, great class. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Mataji. Um, so I have um, a quick question. Um, so you mentioned ab about uh, not doing too much of pious activity because that can come uh, bring you back uh, to the material uh, world. So my question is, I mean, so you are trying to orient, we are trying to orient ourselves to Krishna consciousness and along the ways, we also, uh, I mean, maybe somebody is coming and asking for help, which can uh, make their lives better if we do say for, I mean, any donation for their specific issue. So in those situations, um, if you don't do it also, you would uh, gain bad karma, right? So that's, uh, sometimes it's very hard to decide where to, 
what to do in those situations is, is God, uh, maybe God is, send, uh, sometimes your inner voice says, maybe God is sending this person to you to go and get some help. And yes, yes, Mataji. I, very good, very good question. And this recently happened to us, a friend of ours who was 45, he went to help his parents in India and he passed away. There was a fundraiser for him and you know we sent a check, we sent some, uh, but along with that, I sent them nursing coverage. I sent them the recording of nursing coverage and I said, please chant this during these difficult times. So while I wanted to help through a, you know, a good karma, I don't want to stop myself from spreading Krishna consciousness along with it. And by them listening to Nursing Kavach, which I had recorded for them, I feel that I have channelized this activity in towards Krishna, with Krishna consciousness, because I don't want that philanthropy award in my next life. I really want that if I can make one person listen and read Nursing Kavach or pray to Lord Narsinga, that is my contribution. It's not so much the money. When I was talking about too much, I was talking about, you know, all the philanthropic people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, and they're doing so much for the whole world, immense. And you can see that they, this life also they have is probably a result of some pious activities, but that doesn't protect them from falling down. It still doesn't protect them from uh, um, disease, old age, uh, death. So keeping that in mind, and Satya Prabhu, if you can jump in, keeping that in mind, I was trying to say, be balanced and wherever possible, inject Krishna consciousness in your activities. Yeah, I mean, you summed it up so well, Mataji. I mean, uh, only one equation I'll give you or formula to remember is a real care equal to spiritual care plus material care. That's a real care. So yes, if somebody is hungry, as you said, you know, we as a fellow human beings, we have to help them. We give them food, but give them prasadam. So that is material care plus spiritual care, both. Like how Mataji gave uh, Narshinga Kavach along with the check or whatever. So that is like a material care plus spiritual care. So make sense, Mataji? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. One follow-up question, though, right? If you are um, dealing with people who are uh, not, I mean, who don't have very much background on Hinduism or, um, or Krishna consciousness, then they right away think, um, oh, we are trying to push our concepts to them. Just like how we, when we grow up and uh, when we grow up or go to Christian schools, we always think that oh, we are getting, I mean, they teach you, but they also try to push mm -hmm. their concepts to you. So it's just a very fine line. And um, uh, maybe, I mean, maybe there, it, it just comes to me, uh, okay, we, we shouldn't offend them by pushing our concepts because they, they don't know our things. So just, just trying to get some help on that aspect also if they don't have a background. I'll give you an example, Mataji. Many years ago, uh, I had a boss whose husband was fighting cancer, okay? And he was terminally ill. And at that point, you know, she was very devastated. So um, I didn't tell her what it is. I gave her an actual nursing coverage. And I told her this is a prayer box. Okay, and wear, make your husband wear it in whatever, and gave her a kanti with it. And it looked very classy to her. So she took it and I said, put your prayer because nursing kavach, you can open it. So I told her, this is like a prayer box, put your prayer in it and make your husband wear it. Uh, she took it very happily and uh, she made her husband wear it. She put her prayer in it. Her husband passed away. And when she came back to the office, she was wearing it. So I told her, I'm really sorry that your husband passed away. She's like, that's okay. You know, but this prayer box, I'm going to keep because I'm going to pray for him wherever he is. And I'm going to, you know, this is going to at least protect me. So without giving her Hinduism or Krishna consciousness or anything, I subtly passed it 
to her. And at least till the time I was, we were working together, she used to wear it every day. Okay, yeah. thank you, Mataji. Yeah, sure. Can I add one more point, Mataji? Sorry, mention Mataji. A beautiful, so thanks for sharing that. So Shridevi Mataji, and another thing we have to think about is not just in this life, we are helping the souls. The souls, it is a multi-life journey uh, towards Krishna. That's how Krishna arranged everything. The entire material world, scriptures and everything is, sometimes it takes multiple lifetimes to reach him, right? So sometimes what happens is people, as you pointed out, they will think, oh, we are pushing our belief system on them or something like that. If that is the case, you can still help materially, but you can still pray for them. When you help them, for example, there are kids here in Austin. So I'm also part of a nonprofit organization in Austin. They are not Krishna conscious nonprofit, but it is focused on the underprivileged children's education, right? But I educate them, I mentor them, I, I teach them math or whatever. There, I'm not directly preaching Krishna consciousness, but I'm just building the connection there. So since I'm part of that and I'm just doing whatever I could do with my limited capacity, they appreciate me. That means they're appreciating Krishna also. So indirectly, they're building the Sukriti. So that Sukriti will help them, even if not in this lifetime, but the next lifetime, because they are associated, they are appreciated, even a, you know imperfect devotee, but they're appreciating Krishna actually through that. So that Sukriti will help them at some point in their life journey towards Krishna and they will just get faith, you know, faith. So Sukriti transforms into faith at some point in life or in lifetimes. So we need to have that kind of a long-term vision. Uh, Makes sense to you? We can pray for them. We can help them if they are not using our help in a, you know, um, anti-devotional way, uh, giving education, uh, giving food, uh, you know, whatever. That is all good, actually. Goodness. Makes Even sense, Prabhuji. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Yeah, thank okay. you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Any other questions or comments to Mataji? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Wonderful, amazing class. Thank you for, uh, I didn't have any questions, but uh, really enjoyed the uh, every each and every point you mentioned. Thank you, Mataji. Looking forward to more of your classes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that said, uh, we'll do a quick thank you note. Sugopi Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Swarn uh, Manjari Mataji. It was a lovely class. And you sang the Bhajan Jaya Radha Madhav so sweetly. It was so enchanting. And I jotted down a few points from your lecture. So, uh, first of all, this eighth uh, shaloka of 15th chapter was a very good decision on the part of uh, Satya Prabhu, which he gave it to you. And there was it shows the reality of life. And from uh, 15 chapter is uh, Pushottam Yoga, and Excel, one of the uh, chapter from Bhakti Yogas. And uh, you talked about many things like uh, opportunity, you know, to go to the spiritual world from one body to another. And uh, you gave an example of the book Garbha Gita, which consists of different types of bodies and uh, its actions. And then you shared a very powerful uh, screenshot which was uh, very helpful in comparing consciousness of human life to the animal, animalistic life. And uh, how blissful are we to be in Krishna consciousness, you know, to be transferred to Krishna Lok in the spiritual world by if we keep on chanting. And uh, you gave a very good example of having greed for like endeavor, too much endeavor is not good, but it is good in the spiritual life. And we should have greed uh, for Krishna. And uh, then you described about Srila Prabhupada giving example of then uh, 21 levels of hell also. And then we have to work really hard 
though we have minute independence to decide rightly as it makes the decision of uh, transmigration of soul from one body to another in the next birth. And uh, these were all, and then you cited uh, Prema Bhakti Chandrika book, which was excellent to increase your devotion. And you gave the example of uh, Bhishma Dev from Mahabharat, which was an example of conflict on dualities and how to take care of your uh, anxieties and dualities as uh, mentioned by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita 2.45 to be transcendental to these two qualities. And finally, you gave the Shaloka example of five from chapter eight in Bhagavad Gita, Antkale Chamameva, and that was how to remember Lord Krishna so that we can practice Krishna consciousness all throughout our life by chanting and glorifying Lord and listening to the Krishna conscious uh, tapes and taking out some time from our daily life. Thank you so much. It was all throughout a wonderful uh, lecture of yours. Thank you, Mataji, for summing it up so beautifully. Welcome, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. So with that, we'll uh, do a quick announcement. Radha Damal Prabhu will do. Then we'll do Narsing Arati. Radha Damal Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, so we have a few announcements. Uh, so we had one birthday this week. Uh, that's Madhuri Venugopal Mataji. So let's uh, chant Hare Krishna Mahamudra three times for their uh, benefit. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. And we have a very important program coming up this week. On Tuesday evening on um, uh, 25th May, um, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., we have a, a Narasimha Chaturdashi uh, um, celebrations going to happen. It's an online only program, so please, uh, but we'll have a live telecast of the Arati from the temple. So, but uh, it's, uh, uh, and uh, those who are signed up for Prasadam, will be distributing Prasadam. Um, to their home. So it's an online only program. And please make sure to invite your family and friends and please uh, advertise as much as possible so that more, more and more people get the mercy of uh, uh, Narasimha Bhavan. Okay, please, Hare Krishna. Now uh, we have one more thing. Uh, we have a one more special request uh, our, uh, to uh, request uh, everyone to make a special prayer to Lord Narasimha Dev. Uh, for the parents of uh, Rasamai Madaji. Um, Madaji is a very core uh, member of our community. And uh, her parents are affected by uh, COVID-19 in India. So uh, please uh, continue your prayer for speedy recovery. Hare Krishna. So let's pray for them as well by chanting one time Hare Krishna Mahamadra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. That's all, Puji. Uh, what do you think? Thank you very much, Prabhu. Uh, now, um, our dear Samanvita will sing Narshingarati and we'll dedicate Narshingarati for Rasamayi Mataji's parents' speedy recovery. Over to you, Samanvita.
<clears throat> Hare Krishna Samanvita, it was very nice. Thank you very much for nicely singing. So with that, um, Hare Krishna devotees, we'll conclude our virtual Sunday Peace program. I'll see you all next week uh, during Narshinga Chaturdasi celebration this Tuesday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna.